Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. My name is Javier Romero and here we are going to do the exercise on conflict analysis of the solving part of the course. To begin with, let's go quickly to the slides that are relevant for this exercise. And here we have in the solving part of the course, in the section conflict driven, no good learning, this subsection on conflict analysis is where all the contents relevant to this exercise are explained. And you can go there and have a look at everything that is there. And also, of course, you have the videos where Tosten explained all this very well. And I will put a link to that video or the, yes, to those videos in the description. So now let's then go back to the exercise. Here we have this logic program P and then this table that represents an assignment. So let's go through it. Initially we have decision level one and here we have made a decision to make C false. Then all these other literals are propagated. For example, we propagate that the body A not E is false, and for that we use this no good. Similarly, for this, we use this no good. You see, having that C is false, this no good tells us that it can be the case that C is false and this body is false, hence the body has to be true, and so on up to here. Then at decision level two, we have made this choice to make the body with F and not C true. And then we have propagated all these literals using the no goods that appear here on the right side. Until at some point we find out that some no good has been violated. And then is when the exercise starts. Now, just to be clear, all the no goods that appear here, of course, belong to the set of completion and loop no goods of our program P. Then what the exercise tells us is that we have to derive a conflict no good using the first UIP method, starting from this violated no good that we have here. And then we just have to find the assignment of the algorithm that we have after doing the conflict analysis. Good, then let's go to it. We will focus on the annotated table because this contains all the information that we need to solve the exercise. Then to derive the conflict no good with the first UIP, we start with the conflict no good that we have here. Then we can mark here that true of A belongs to the latest decision level and also false of not B, not G, while the other belongs to a previous decision level. Then the first thing we see, we have these two literals. This is the latest that we have obtained. Hence, we will resolve this no good with this one to obtain a new no good. And this is very simple. I just will be copying the ones that are different than this one. So these two, and also the one from there. F not B not E. Again, this I don't copy because it's resolved with this one, and this I have to copy here. So this no good is the result of resolving these two no goods. And if you look at it, it makes sense that if this no good and this no good are part of our set of no goods, this no good is implied by them. Because we have that it cannot be the case that A is true, this body is false, and this is true. Because if A is true, the body is false, and this is true, then for one value of the body not B, not G, this is violated. And for the other value, this is violated. So if these three hold, then one of these two no goods will be violated. So there will be not a solution. Hence, this is a no good. Nice. Then now we can also mark here T of A if belongs to this decision level, but T and T of G also belongs here. So now we resolve against this no good because TG appears here before TA. 
and then we obtain ta false not b not e and true a e and you can reason as before and you will see that this is a no good that there is no solution where these three literals hold again we mark here the ones of this level and then we have this true a e that appears be before the other hence we resolve against the no good there and then we obtain true of a false not b not e and then t a t e and actually what you see is that a no good is a set of this signed literal and this appears twice so we can erase one of the occurrences then we have this no good and it turns out that there's only one literal of this decision level because this appears here and te appears there hence this is a conflict no good obtained with the first uip method this is the solution to part a this is as simple as that because we obtain it by uni by resolution coming from the the conflict no good and it only contains one literal of this last decision level nice now we have to find the assignment after this conflict analysis and this is very easy so we will back jump to the first decision level where the no good becomes unit and in this case there's only one possibility that this is decision level one hence we have to undo this decision level two so we can consider that this no longer is there and since this no good is asserting we can use it for, for propagating so with the no good that tells us that it cannot be the case that it is true that this body is false and that e is true we can propagate that a has to be false because otherwise with these two the no good would be um, would be violated hence what is the assignment the assignment is this one so this solves the exercise and this is it and this is uh, correct and all you have to do but what i will do now in the next one two minutes is to show you another way to derive the conflict no good that is a bit more graphical and uh, i mean you can always do too and check that we you obtain the same result with them i've cleaned it a bit to find uh, uh, the solution to this part A with another method. So again, we have the no good. We know these two belongs belong to our decision level. And this is the one that appears at the bottom. So we can see that we have obtained this using TG. So then we can mark TG here. And we can say that with this arrow that we have used this literal to obtain this one. Or that this literal, we have implied it using this one. And we can mark as before the no good here. Now, TG, we have implied it using that AE is true. So we can mark this here. And with this arrow, we say that TG is implied by TAE, probably using other literals. Oops, sorry. Then we mark again here. And we have that true AE has been implied by true A. And also by true E, but we don't care about it because this belongs to another decision level. So for true AE, we only have used true A of this level. And we can also say that for true A, we have used this literal the one the decision literal here okay but this yes okay we can mark it also this is we will not use it but this could be needed in some case hence if we look at what we have done here at this graphical representation of the of of how we have generated all these signed literals of how we have generated all sign literals that occur in our conflict 
um, no good, then this is what is called an implication graph or a part of the implication graph because we are missing the, the links to some of the sign needles, but the others are actually not needed. Then what we see is that for deriving f of not being of g and true of a, it's enough with having true of a. Once we have true of a, we can derive this one, this one, and this one. And we can derive, and for this we have to use this no good, this no good, this no good, starting from this one. So actually, what we know is that this is the first, is the first a unique implication point because once true of a is set, this follows, this follows, and this follows, and with this, the no good is violated. Hence, we know that our um, conflict no good will contain true of a, and it will also contain all the literals that occur in the no goods that we have used that do not belong to this decision level because the ones that belong to this decision level like uh, true g or this one here they have been resolved so then just looking at this we know that the no good we will derive would be this one I will paint it here, maybe with blue to make it clearer. So we have used this no good, and this does not belong to our decision level, hence it will end up there. And here, this all referred to literals that are propagated uh, in this decision uh, level, except for this TE that appears there. And that's it. So again, let me just uh, do it quickly. What you can do is, you build the graph like this, and then you see what is the first point from which you can derive all the literals that occur in the conflict no good. So this is not the first one. This could be the first one in another case, but here it's TA, the first one, that the first literal from which you can derive all the literals of this decision level that occur in the conflict no good. And then you know that true of a must belong to this conflict uh, no good that we derive. And what else is here? Well, all the literals that occurred in the no goods that you have been used, that does not, that do not belong to this decision level. Hence, this is this one. And also this T of E. I think the explanation has been a bit, a bit lengthy, but this is uh, a straightforward to calculate. Good. So I hope you understood it and you enjoyed it. So have fun and see you in another video. Ciao.